any act of omission in the performance of his or her duty, with official duty. So, Madam Speaker, I don't know, because this is the constitution. This is the uh, supreme law of the Gambia. It's, if it is saying like, here in the constitution, I don't know where the Minister of Justice has the legality to uh, bring about this to the National Assembly. And the, the next thing I wanted to protest is on about agriculture. Actually, no. you've now exhausted your time. Okay, okay. Let me wrap up, Madam Speaker. Okay. Thank you very much. May I... I just want to thank the RI, International Republic Institute, for helping some of, the, some of us as National Assembly members. They have, have did a lot for us, honestly, individually and especially some of uh, the caucuses of the regions. And we are doing well in our, in our communities. And they help us a lot in going to our regions to sensitize our people in so many, especially about political tolerance, so that there can be tolerance in our districts. I thank Arara for a lot for doing that. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Um, can I call on the Honorable Member of my constituency? And uh, the following week I went there, I found the police checkpoint there. So I want to thank the Minister for that. And uh, also I want to thank the Minister of Health. Also I cried here and I said, in my constituency I have only two health posts there. We need a health centre. So he went there with his team. His team went there to survey and see what is going to be happen in my consequence. So I want to thank the Minister of Health also for that. But I'm also appealing to the ministers also, whenever they are going to our consequence, please let them inform us so that we know they are also going to our consequence. That's an appeal from me. Please, whenever you ministers are going to our consequence, please inform us so that we will know you people are going to our area. We can also inform our people based on your information. Uh, Madam Speaker, sometimes I sit and I wonder what National Assembly we have in this chamber here. We are saying here, we should be sincere. We should left our, our political task at the gate, but that does not happen in this assembly here. I see some members here. They are here for their political interests, but they are not here for the interests of the Gambian people. And we are all elected to come here to serve our Gambian people, not our political uh, parties. Madam Speaker, we are saying that people are insulting uh, our elders. But to me, what goes around comes around. This is not a new thing to the Gambia. People are used to insult our elders, our political leaders. But we never talk about it. But today, the button has turned and the button is hitting some of our political leaders. Now we are, we are going to say it. The appeal I am going to say is let all go to our political leaders. Tell them to, to, to call their supporters, not to insult our people. If not, this strength will going to continue because we all have our political leaders. And all our political leaders are, are aware of this thing, but none of them is talking about it. They, all, they are all keeping quiet about it. So we are all one. We are all Gambians. Let's put this political sentiment back uh, uh, let's put these political sentiments outside at the gym. But whenever we are in this National Assembly member, 
In this National Assembly Chambers, let's look Gambia first. I am, a, I, am a, 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 I am an opposition, but I am an opposition with a different. Whenever the government do, do good, I am going to stand and say it. But whenever the government does bad, bad thing also, I am going to stand here and say it. But in this National Assembly here, whenever you want to exercise it, you will see people try to hit you. They will try to even insult you. Is that democracy? That's not democracy. Let's say the truth. Whenever the government do the, th the right thing, we are, we are going to say it. But if they do the wrong things also, we are going to say it. But if you want to say it, you will see people. Point, point of observation, point of order, point of... Are we here for that? We are not here for that. We are here for the national interest. We are not here for the indiv individual interest. Madam Speaker, I have a problem in my constituency. <laughs> Yesterday, I even talked talk, talk with, the, with the minister about it, but he told me that for you, you, you have no problem on this feeder road. But honestly, for you, we are suffering. We have problems on this feeder road. As the Deputy Speaker said here, we have area councils. Most of their resources have been taken from them. If the minister can help us and return those uh, resources back to area council, Billahi area council, they are going to deliver. We will not stand here and ask the minister for this feeder rules. It's the responsibilities of the area councils. They are going to build us feeder rules. But if their resources are taken from them, how would they do it? They cannot do it. So the Minister of Local Government is here. Please try to return those resources back to the area council so that they can deliver. Uh, my other problem is water. We all have water. There are so many villages in my constituency. The lack of this clean drinking water. We don't have water, we don't have boreholes. Only few villages in my villages that have boreholes. And uh, the wall is expanding. We also need these boreholes. We don't need to go to this well and try to do this manpower job. Women are tired now. We are tired of those manpower jobs now. We cannot be cooking, we cannot be going to the garden, we cannot be doing everything and also going to do these manpower things. We are tired. Women are tired now. We also need an, a borehole in my constituency. Secondly, uh, the Minister of Agriculture is also here. I cried here. There are some of, some of, my village, uh, some of the villages in my constituency, they have a garden, but water is the problem. I mentioned the village here, Kawali. They have a vegetable garden, but water is their problem. So I'm appealing to you, please send your techniques to go around my constituency to see the problem of my people. Uh, Madam Speaker, I have 26 villages. Only five villages are on the highway. The rest are in the, are in the off road. So we we, we really need roads. Roads are our problem. We really, Fonyi Bondali is really in need of roads and water. We also want our, our community, our people to, to, to get access to the health. Uh, I don't have much to say, just to thank the Honorable uh, uh, Speaker, and the staffs of the National Assembly members, and also to, 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 to show my solidarity with the people of URR and CRR in particularly. And I want to thank all my colleagues for their... <coughs> thank you, Honorable. Um, 
Actually, honorable members, it's uh, after 2.30. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, members of parliament, ministers, the media and all other protocols respectfully observed, I wish to express appreciation to all of you for allowing me to come in at this moment of this very vibrant debate that is taking uh, place right now and to share or observe the emerging issues coming from this constructive engagement of our lawmakers and who are entrusted with these affairs of state through the people, through the population. I have been listening very carefully and I'm sure my fellow ministers and other members have been listening very carefully and I just try to make a synopsis of what we have been hearing at the same time, trying to make, I will try to make some observations with regards to the state of affairs and the issues that you have raised that are very pertinent, very important, and necessary to take note of in our new democracy and the new Gambia. To move forward and to see the Gambia as our country, for us, by us, with us, and for our children and the future. Having said that, I have noted that you've talked about work ethics and democracy. The issue of democracy is very central in the debates that I heard you talking about, where you talk about rights, the need for effective participation, the need for people to participate when issues are being done on their behalf, and for them to be at the center of the decision making in order for us to work towards a more sustainable and more effective implementation process that people don't feel left out. And I agree with you totally. We're talking, let's talk about democracy. You also talked about um, the issue of resources in terms of productive resources, that is land. Land is very key that you have been talking about. And there are various perspectives that have come to light in your discussions today and your observation regarding the situation in terms of access, ownership, and the dynamics that are unfolding with land being a very strategic resource, they are noted. I may not be able to speak for all the ministers because they are the subject matter specialists or the key ministries that are responsible, but I can give you some insights as a cabinet member and to also talk to you about the way govern, we govern in terms of issues affecting this country. That the issue of land is quite central in the discussions that is going on in cabinet and the minister for land is taking, really taking in very, very serious uh, concerns and moving them further in a democratic way. So you will find that there are contestations on land issues where it's not our making. We have inherited it. We found the, the issues going on. And in order to respect the rights and responsibilities and taking cognizance of the context in which we are emerging from, we need to follow due process and due diligence to deliver the issue of learn and the people of the Gambia from the scorch because of the serious malgovernance and lack of respect for due processes that has brought us into the situation that we are all currently talking about. I heard you talk about also roads and networks. It cuts across all the debates that I have heard that roads is, are very important because through roads we can communicate, through roads we can move. And I am sure you must have been hearing the efforts that are being made by this dispensation with regards to the efforts that are being made to make roads accessible. We are trying to, when you talk about decentralization and you talk about issues of rights, remember where your right begins, that's where um, it ends, somebody's right starts and continues. So we cannot just tell you, yes, we are going to bring it immediately. But we know it's a right, and those rights are being given out systematically and procedurally. We cannot respond to all the issues at the same time, but systematic efforts and initiatives are being taken to cover the whole country. Hitherto, you have seen how areas that were socially excluded because of their location, which was not by virtue of their choice, were left behind, and now this dispensation is trying to reach out to them with good roads, networks and so on, but it requires processes. 
A lot of assessments are being done. You just cannot get up and say, okay, I have been told that there is no road over there, so let me go. We are following a very systematic developmental process and approach, like any good government, to respond to these issues holistically and prioritizing in terms of everybody has a priority. But we have to follow a systematic approach, and I can assure you, the issue of roads, you have seen, you have heard, and you have even seen people Communities celebrating because efforts are being made to reach there. The Minister of Works and Communication is here, and you have heard him say a lot of things, and even responding to the point that sometimes we are being blamed. How can you do this without us knowing it? And when it is also a pressing need for the rains that are coming and so many other things. So these are things, you talked about access to water. Water is a right. I agree with you absolutely. Shortage of water in terms of portable water, shortage of water in terms of access to our farms, and also um, what is needed to make our agriculture work. We are working on it. Remember, we are depending on the old infrastructure. That is what we found. Now we are trying to improve the infrastructure. You have heard the Minister for Water and Energy talking about the pipes that are being laid. We have to upgrade. These are some of the things, even without us talking to each other. If we observe what has been going on, you will see the efforts that are systematically being used to, in order to, to upgrade, to improve, and also to change the systems. Because if systems are more than 40, 50 years, and you have the current technology that is going on, you will have to change them. You will have to systematize them and deal with them. And I think that one is going on. I can assure you that the Gambia will not be short of water at the end of the plans that we are doing. You have the National Development Plan that is guiding us, but we cannot give it to everybody at the same time it should be a very frank, open, and honest engagement. We have problems. Everybody has problems. But it is within the, the national development fr framework that we bring in all these issues that are affecting our development for us to have a systematic approach, and that's what is being done. We have had, and we will do our best to respond to them. And the issue of participation um, uh, ambulances in the health sector and staffing. I remember a lot of work being done, and now we are moving building up on that. I'm happy that there are appreciations with the efforts that are being made. It's not easy. Remember, we discovered only one month resources to be able to move the country. It was almost collapsed economically. And the efforts that are being made to save, to raise funds, to be able to get the taxes that will be paid for us to put it back into the economy has to be appreciated. Because you were all witnesses to what we discovered when we took over. And you are also witnesses to what is now going on in terms of the revelations that we are having of resources that have been squandered to the point that nobody could believe it. So to deal with that, we have to act maturely and appreciate the difficult situation. We are not witch hunting now. What we are doing is to respond to the circumstances and be bold enough to take it head on. And to take it head on, it means there must be responses from different areas. We who have been, uh, who are supposed to be working with you, you are the lawmakers, who are supposed to be also informing others and to understand the fact that we have inherited a situation that is not our own making, and maybe not your own making. Therefore, we have to be together. We have to understand together that to do that, we have to understand the circumstances surrounding us. And on a daily basis, this is what is being done in terms of resources, ambulances, we, we, we are, people are giving us ambulancing and we are, we are prioritizing, we are taking it across the whole country. Staffing, you can, to get a doctor, it takes you seven, eight years. To get a nurse, it takes you four to five years. And to get a CNN, at least three years. Now, to get those cap the capacity and the availability of all those things are things that require training and uh, resources. And therefore, the... The, the efforts that are being made are taking account of all, all of that to be, for us to help, to, to, to be able to help us to respond to these needs. It cannot be automatic. If it is automatic, we will get it wrong. But it should not be delayed also. There is no room for complacency because of the extraordinary situation we found in the Gambia and what we have inherited. And it is our responsibility as a whole to be able to respond to them in a more sustainable way, and that is what that is going on. We're talking about uh, peace and peaceful coexistence, and I think that is what needs to be the hallmark of every Gambian at this moment, crucial moment in time. We have seen 
how stories are revealed, how people have been subjected to all forms of abuses, the impunity, the lack of respect for human rights and dignity, and the abuse of the fundamental freedoms of the people of this country for more than 22 years, for a period where nobody dares talk, and now we have emerged in a non-violent way. I want to appreciate all of you and every Gambian for that. That came because we understood we had a common goal and we have to rescue and save our country. We have come out of that. To have caused a massacre would have been a big, a, a, a great opportunity at that time when we were trying to change the regime, but that did not happen. We followed the rule of law. We followed the democratic principles. We were guided by in constitutions and laws governing the elections. And we emerged from it without any crisis. I want to congratulate all of us for that. What is left now is to guard that chain and to develop the, uh, and to have the spirit of peace and peaceful coexistence. Because it is not about our individual selfish interest, but the collective good and the country's interest at heart that we have to take in order to put aside our personal partisan interests, like you have all been saying, to the collective interest that will move the Gambia forward. People come and go. We, institutions will remain. People come and go. Countries will remain. It is what we live there and what we do that is going to determine the type of country we have. So having gotten out of that difficult situation, having gotten out of that, uh, that situation, I think it is time for us to move in a peaceful coexistence, tolerating the diversity, accepting people and respect each other. Insults will not take us anywhere. Following each other and putting our these things against each other is not going to take us anywhere because everybody has a right to live and we must coexist in peace and tranquility for us to know how to move and develop our country forward. I think this is very key. Irrespective of where we belong, this is a democracy. You have right to belong to anywhere. But in the democracy, when people are given the mandate to take responsibility, that mandate must be respected and must be given the due opportunity for it to mature and we have constructive engagement. You can criticize, but constructively. Give me an alternative that you think, and if it resonates and is in within the framework of what is needed, we will do it. But we should not be insulting. We have to need respect leaders, our leaders. We must respect ourselves. Even the youngest child should be respected. Because that's the culture in which Gambians have been brought up. So seeing what we are seeing and experiencing in the social media, and what people who are expected to be good role models are supposed to do, of course, it's a lot of uh, frustrations for everybody. Because sometimes you feel that, do people even feel, do we really need to be there? You ask yourself that fundamental question, and we must take responsibility in shaping and directing, redirecting our country towards the right direction. Because we are all witnesses to what had happened. And we are all witnesses to the efforts that we are going to move. And I want to say that I am hopeful because I am seeing positive change going on despite all those, but we have to also look at our attitude in how we deal with the issues that are going on. You talk about uh, the environment. Indeed, if the environment is not protected, if the environment is not taken into consideration, nothing is going to work. Because if this is an environment, and if you look at environment in its diversity, there are various resources that are within there. People cutting down the trees and not replacing them is a problem. The Ministry of Agriculture is doing uh, sorry, agriculture and the environment have introduced tree planting uh, 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 exercises. You have philanthropists, individuals working with the Ministry of Environment, who are coming with best practices, planting trees everywhere. And also, I urge in that every one of you, government cannot do it all, if we are going to be honest to ourselves. If we, in our various constituencies, come together and say, this year, this rainy season, we are going to plant 2,000 plants. And you, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you take it upon ourselves. Like we organize people for our political campaigns. Like we organize people to help us to do certain things. And do it, do it yourself. The DIY principle is very key, even whereas the government has a role as the primary duty bearer. We also, as individuals, also must develop practices how do we keep the environment clean? If we don't have graders, I'm, let me just give you a good example of myself. I have moved 
to the uh, residence of the vice presidency. It's not everything that was provided to me. It's the basics that were given. And I decided to say, I will change it to an area where everybody will come and admire it. The cleaning of the environment, the felling, uh, cutting of those crops, I killed more than 10 snakes there because it was not taken care of. Snakes were there, and the soldiers, I invited the soldiers, I invited the security forces, and I said, look, I have to move here, uh, this is one of the constitutional requirements, and I have to do it, let me just come, can you help me? And they came in numbers to help us do the work. These are best practices that we can learn. The Gambia is emerging from a very difficult situation, a situation that not only money can give it us, it's our cre with creativity and innovation. Creativity and innovation and selflessness. If we look for money, we will not get all the answers because the money was looted and now we are trying to put heads together and make sure that we have the resources that are necessary. And everything is not free. We have been given grants and we want to appreciate that. We should appreciate the grants. We are also given very, very, very concessionally rooms. It will never be enough. But our creativity and innovation, if I plant 20 trees and 15 of them grow, it will be there forever, or it will be there for a very long time. But if I am waiting for the money to go and get the 20 trees to be planted, when I can go to a farm and pick up 10 malina plants and plant them in the area I want them to be, it will be a different ball game. So the environment, we have to use creative ways, and there are policies that are guiding the environment. There will be policies also that will that create a terms of engagement. And I said it is the subject matter ministries and so on that are going to ID cards and decentralization. I agree with you. It is a matter of rights and and the government is aware of that. We are doing everything, you know, as we learn, as we implement, we are learning. At first it was concentrated, but later on in cabinet, the minister said it is there is need to decentralize. There is need to decentralize because people cannot pay their monies to come just to look for the ID card. They will be paying more than even what it costs. I heard him say that. We agreed, but also the structures have to be in place and we are working. I am, Cora is under my responsibility. And we have just signed contracts that will allow them to have space in places where the ID cards can be uh, installed for people to go there and do. But there is a lot of impatience. There is too much expectation and impatience, what we have seen. Sometimes something that you need to do, because when you know procedure and processes, you want to develop a policy, you don't just sit down and talk about it. You need to put follow a recruitment process, looking at the subject matter specialist, getting the right people to go out, do the research, get the data, prepare the document, make a first draft, and then put it out for validation and so on. But then if we say this is what we want and we feel we will get it now, we will be doing very shoddy jobs. And from what we have inherited, I don't think we should allow that. Whatever we do should transcend us, it should go beyond us. Nobody should be able to take the Constitution and take change it for 52 times or more. Nobody should be able to bring in a law, change a law at any time because you want it to interest you personally. Because you want it to interest you personally, you must bring it there so that your personal selfish interest will be fulfilled over and above the others. I think doing business should take a particular procedure that benefits the common good. And I want to appreciate the observation that was made by one of my sisters here, calling about social accountability to what it is. When we come to parliament, after our partisan political endeavors, that's part of democracy, everybody has a right. When you get to parliament, it is all about the people that you are representing, and it's the Gambians. Because that's where the laws are. They don't make laws for or laws for uh, one party and another. It is meant for Gambians. So in the House of Parliament, it is about the interests and the best interests of Gambians who have entrusted all of you within your various political partisan sectors to come together as Gambians to prepare the laws, to, be, to, to develop, to move the country forward. And in that presence, we do not have to go into acrimony. Because that same law is what is going to affect you and me, irrespective of who you are as a Gambian. So the ID card issue is being decentralized, and we are following the due processes. I have just signed some of, the, some of these things, and the Minister of Interior is very busy with it. Last week, he called me when I was almost at the plane to tell me that, have you signed this? Have I said everything is done. 
But you must give us time because if we rush, we will not get it right. I'm telling you. But of course, unnecessary delays cannot be tolerated. We are aware of that. Then you come to the issue of education. That's the key. The citadel of knowledge. If people are not educated, they cannot even understand what they are analyzing. You wouldn't understand this. It's not possible. You have to be educated. You have to understand. You have to read and so on. And therefore, we are giving all interest and focus to education. And the ministries that are responsible are doing a lot. I think our weakness is communication, as some of you have raised. The communication bit is being addressed because we should be flagging out what, are do, what is happening in different ministries. That is the purpose, to improve that. You have your select committees on all these subject matters you are raising. We have to improve our doing business. If we don't come to you, come to us. Ministry of Health, when I was the Minister for Health, I want to thank the, uh, the select committee on health, etc. Who came, went out, did their homework, went round the country and came up with a very, very critical document. And it was the basis of that document that the Ministry of Health was able to look at what it has assessed to come up with a, pact, with a compact. A compact that is forever going to improve the health ministry when we finish. And that is what, my, uh, 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 what is inherited from me and, will be, and it is be implemented more effectively and efficiently by the current Minister for Health. This is how you build institutions. So if we are not coming because of the busy nature of our work, or we can write a letter and tell us we are sending these people or we want to do this, or go out, do your thing and write, and then we respond. There should be a mutual, a sort of a, a coherent existence. Based, that those are part of your job also. Your select committees should be coming. They are not only as individuals. You know, when people come to tell me, yes, in my village, this is what I want, I, I will listen. But if you say in my region, you are now talking for the collective. Let us look at the bigger picture. And from the bigger picture, when the center is strong, the periphery, will be served effectively. This is the philosophy I want us to look at in terms of how we do with some of the issues that have legislative and governance implications in what the issues you have read. Attacks and unlawful behavior, that is true. We are emerging from a very unruly situation. You know that. A situation where there was no rule of law, and I am using this to talk with authority because if you look at what has been revealed on the commissions that are being said and how things are going and what has been happening, you will never expect that Gambians would do those atrocities. You will never expect it. And I want to make this open to apologize to those foreigners I thought were the ones behind it. It is us. Let us be bold enough to accept our situation. And I am happy to see you people talking about it here and associating yourselves with it and even bringing it into the public domain. This is the best place to bring it. Let us be respectful and be mindful of the situation we are coming from. Let us, I know there is, people have vendetta. You can understand, but we have to go a step forward. We should be above water. Even if we have personal sentiments, how do we translate that negative energy into a positive energy that is going to move this country forward? How are we going to say, I'm not going to insult my friend because he or she reported me, but I will tell you I know about it and I have decided to forgive you forever and ever. That person will be ever for grateful and respect you for that matter. Let us stop the insults. It's not good. We are all people coming from different religious backgrounds and you know what are the ethical issues of morals and standards. Let us take care of that. We, know, we also know that it was a very difficult situation that cuts across party boundaries. It cuts about it because of the poor governance situation and the lack of democracy. Now we have come, if you feel hot, follow the due process and don't start attacking and quarreling and insulting. It is not good, it's not healthy for the country and it could be a very volatile situation for everybody because if you insult me and I say, okay, I'm going, somebody may come and it could raise some negative vibes. Let us please, please, please guide, guard the chair, the, 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 guard the peace and try to mold our characters into a way that we will, uh, we will, uh, we will move. Respect for the, the, the social media, so, so the, the issue of uh, the, the institutions. Institutions are made to serve the polity. 
to serve the people. And it is the policies, the rules, the regulations, and the laws we put in them that turn things beyond us. It's not meant for anybody, but it is meant to serve the people. And therefore, the institutions have to be strengthened. They have to be, uh, uh, to be funded properly so that they will be able to do their jobs. Those days we had traditional structures, and I want to underscore their importance. But we have to move beyond that. We have to have institutions that can be able to move with those structures, to be able to uh, build on those structures and let it move. The land issue is a very sensitive issue, and there are people who have vested interest in them. Institutions have to take their responsibilities, following the rule of law, and objective analysis to make sure that we address the land issue. If we don't do that, it could be a very volatile thing. And to do that, we have to be objectively ready that every Gambian or individual has right to land. And we should create the opportunity and the enabling opportunity for them to have access to land, to be able to live a decent life. Those in the farms also need their land. Land has been contested in different places, and it is taking on a very interesting turn. The Minister of Land has been doing a lot of work, and I believe that we should build those institutions, strengthen them, work with the traditional structures to ensure how we put these things and document them. You are the lawmakers. All the laws that you are doing, you have the handset. Everything you say is a carry in handset. Why are you having the handset? Because that is one that remains in the institution. You will finish your term. Anybody will finish their term. But what remains is the information and the document that is there. And therefore, we have to respect the institution. We have to uh, strengthen them. We have to uh, make sure that the laws and policies are followed systematically and due process is given to them. We must also consider that certain things, uh, our work ethics is the last thing I want to work or talk about. It is very difficult. We inherited very difficult situations. And I think if we are all observant and we are able to look at ourselves, Lateness at work is something that <laughs> I have observed everywhere. Filing systems are not properly done. When you want information, even to be able to write something or that will make a big difference in the institution, it is being resisted or kept. You are not even, uh, uh, people are not ready to cope with you because they think, hey, you know, you know, I was enjoying my life and this is the one. All sorts of things, assumptions. If we don't change our work ethics, and say, if I come to work, today I will make sure that I clean or clear up four or five files. Those that require process, I will hand them over to the due process and then follow it diligently. The way we are so impatient about implementation, it will not move. And I want to appeal to all of us, to all of us to ensure that whilst we are all committed to moving the Gambia forward, we must think about quality, we must think about standards, we must think about due processes, and we must respect ability and competence to be able to move our